and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 25th of January 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of wow news and comment. In the headlines today, the patch notes have been updated for the 4.0.6 PTR. The best place to check those changes out would be on the comparison page on MMO Champion. The information to get there is in the description below this video. The patch contains a couple of interesting changes you might want to have a look at, including the fact that the Armadillo Pup and Guild Herald are available at revered guild reputation instead. So that's a pretty big deal, considering Armadillo Pup used to be exalted, and I believe there was actually very few rewards, if any, at revered. Also, you no longer have to discover the entrances of Cataclysm Dungeons in order to queue for them, and Moonkin form is getting a flat 15% damage reduction rather than increased armor. Also a bit of a benefit for that as well is the fact that shapeshifting in and out of Moonkin form will break rooting effects, which is something that is not going to be the case with the rest of the druid forms. It will only eliminate slowing effects as opposed to hard disables and roots. This is part of the patch notes, but I think it's worthy of a separate topic considering how significant it is. Normal dungeons are going to reward double the justice points in your first random normal daily dungeon quest, and bosses from the level 85 normal dungeons, that's Grimbatol, Halls of Origination, and the Lost City of Tolvia, will also each give 30 justice points when killed. The point of this is to encourage you to not jump straight into heroics, it's so that you can go into the level 85 normals and gear up at a reasonable rate before hitting the heroics. The fact that Blizzard are taking the heroics seriously and making sure you can't just jump into them is somewhat heartening, although considering the number of nerfs that are being applied to heroic bosses, that would be, what's that, 19? Possibly more than that now? In patch 4.0.6, it's a little bit of a mixed message. The latest issue of the WoW comic by DC Comics is now available digitally for the cost of $1.99. You can check that out in the description below this video. If you have some interest in the comics yet don't want to splash out for them, there is a free mini episode of it available on that site that you can read, so go check it out. And with that, it's time for your Daily Blues. Devastate is apparently devastated by the fact that the US forums get more blue replies than the EU. In fact, he says it's quite weird and upsetting. Upsetting? Seriously? You get upset over that? Really? Oh lord. Anyway, Rixian responds and says you're comparing one region, the US, to one language in one region, which is English EU. If you add in the other languages, which is German, French, Spanish, and Russian, then you get a fairer comparison. In this commentator's personal opinion, it's because the EU forums are infinitely more whiny than the US. Yes, there I said it. In the several years that I was on the EU forums, I found it full of sycophants, crybabies, whiners, spineless brats, you name it. I don't know if it's improved since then, but it's looking fairly unlikely. Whatever the case, very little of worth is actually said on the EU forums that isn't said on the US. And that's simply what happens, you just don't have enough things going on for there to be unique and original thoughts coming out of both forums. There's so many people there. I have never seen anything on the EU forums that hasn't been on the US forums already or is being discussed at the same time, and while both forums are really bad, from my experience of reading them and analysing them over the past five or six years, the US forums actually has better discussions because they don't tend to get upset so easily. The EU forums have this penchant for getting really, really upset over absolutely nothing at all, taking things emotionally, and suddenly, of course, oh, emotions involved, that means a flame war, let's get it locked down. Hate that, absolutely despise it. But there you go, there is your answer. They don't, in fact, get more. Was that a little ranty for you? Well, I refer you to the name of my website. Af comes in with this one uh, regarding the let them win mentality. He is confused by this, he doesn't like it, and he is demanding that people stop saying it entirely. Slorkus has a number of responses to this, and some of them I agree with, some of them don't. Yes, I agree that pulling off a win against superior odds does feel more gratifying, However, I do not agree with the whole idea that you could suddenly take leadership, spur your team on to victory. It just doesn't work that way. That's not how random battlegrounds actually work. Here's the thing, in a random battleground, no one is more important than anyone else. Except, of course, if you're looking at yourself and you believe that you're infinitely more important than everybody else. Everyone has the same attitude, oh, it's a bunch of pugs, our expectations are really, really low. So if we do see it going the wrong way, then yes, people just want it to end and get into another one. And I've seen this happen in a wide variety of different games. Dota-style games have this problem, especially in pug groups. 
And I don't entirely disagree with the attitude, honestly. There are times when, yes, I would rather my time not be wasted with a long, languishing loss that we know is coming, as opposed to just letting it go and getting on with another one. In fact, actually, I think it's respectful of people's time to concede a match that you know you are going to lose. Indeed, StarCraft 2, prime example. You know, you GG when you know that you cannot win. You do not float your buildings off to the side of the map and hang out there for five minutes, wasting people's time. That's disrespectful. So... Honestly, I can't agree with Slorkus in that regard in purely random battlegrounds. If you have a fixed team of, say, five people in that battleground, then you might have a point. But you cannot take leadership of a random battleground. It is like trying to herd kittens. It can't be done. Zahim clarifies when Alenia decides to come along and complain about the fact that the Justice reagent vendors are too expensive, because, you know, this is an entirely original discussion. And uh, Zahim comes along and says they're definitely not cost-effective and they're certainly not meant for everyone. However, there are scores of people out there with large excesses of justice points with no need or ability to obtain any more and nothing to spend them on. This provides an excellent alternative for a select portion of players. Yeah, I would agree with what he's saying there, honestly. A lot of people have really complained way out of proportion on this particular issue, and I have to wonder why. But it's not like you're being forced to use them. I mean, seriously, it is just a sink for excessive numbers of justice points, and that is about it. And bear in mind, I might add, that if they made them too cheap, then you're basically asking the entire economy to go haywire. And it's already bad enough as it is, as far as I'm concerned, without there being yet another way to create gold out of thin air. And with that, it's time for your daily grind. The Maximilian quest line continues to get weirder and weirder as he rides forth and asks for blessings from the light spirits, which are, in fact, actually very angry steam elementals, which insist on beating on me. I like the fact that this quest is a little bit self-aware. It's like, oh, yes, and please stop attacking my squire. And then, of course, when you kill them, he complains. <sighs> yeah, it, it's, it's pretty funny, I must say. But bear in mind, you have to stand next to the elementals for a while to actually trigger Maximilian's action. Otherwise, it will simply not do anything. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature. It's Raid or Die. In the background right now, you are seeing the first kill of Lady Sinestra by Paragon. And this video is available in the description below this video. If you want to watch all of it, I would recommend that you do. So Paragon was the first kill to not only down Lady Sinestra, but also clear all Cataclysm Heroic raid content. Indeed, they are the only guild to do so right now. It took around seven weeks to clear all of that content from the launch of the game. Taiwanese guild Dream, however, took the world first kill of Alakia, which Paragon were able to follow up on shortly afterwards. Method took the world's second and first alliance kill of Lady Sinestra, though they have yet to defeat Nefarian and Alakia, and that's most likely due to hotfixes put into place after the Paragon kill of Nefarian last week, which involved stacking feral druids in order to take advantage of a particular mechanic. A legitimate kill on Nefarian after these fixes has yet to occur, though it should still be pointed out that Paragon were not suspended or banned for their actions, indicating that Blizzard did not believe the raid stacking was an exploit. US guilds continue to lag somewhat behind their EU counterparts, with the top two US guilds, Vodka and Premonition, having yet to kill Sinestra or Alakia. No news on when 4.1 will hit either, so they've got plenty of time to actually get that done. If we have a look at the current progress in Heroics, Harfus Wormbreaker is the first boss to have over 1,000 guilds kill him, with 1,133 guilds bringing him down. That's about 3.7% of the current guilds within the raiding community. Kimaron is surprisingly now the second most killed Heroic boss, with a large jump over the last week, and and that's up to about 555 guilds now having downed him. Valion and Theralion, plus the Ascendant Council, continue to be massive stumbling blocks, as does Cho'Gal, with significant fall-offs on each, indicating that the difficulty of the dungeon increases dramatically after the first boss. Half of the guilds who have killed Heroic Cho'Gal, however, have now also killed Lady Sinestra, which indicates that the encounter remains in an unfinished state and is not properly balanced. This is unfortunate, but also unsurprising given Blizzard's history of constantly underestimating the tenacity of their raiding community, leaving bosses unfinished because they do not believe that they will be reached as quickly as they actually are. You know, you'd think that after the incident starting in Blackwing Lair going all the way through entire unfinished instances in TBC, they'd have actually learned from this mistake. Indeed, for all its faults, Wrath had actually significantly fewer problems with no bosses that I would truly describe as unfinished. 
The current composition of the top 20 is 8 EU guilds, 2 Russian guilds, 6 US, and 2 Taiwanese and 2 Korean guilds, consisting of 14 Horde guilds and 6 Alliance. US realm Illidan slips from its position as the top raiding realm as Paragon carried Lightning's Blade to the top of the rankings. Rather than being a top heavy realm, however, Lightning's Blade also contains 7 other guilds who have killed at least one heroic boss, as well as 3 more that have cleared all normal mode content. It should also be pointed out that this realm is dominated by Horde guilds, with only a single Alliance guild in the top 20 on that realm. Horde outnumber Alliance more than 5 to 1 on that server. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. This one comes in from Darcinia, who says, Hi, Total Biscuit. Love your show. So does my 18-month-old who calls you Toti. God, you actually let a child watch my show? You'll be scarred for life. Anyway, the issue I'm writing to you about has to do with mage food and water. It appears that once the mage hits 85, they can no longer conjure up food that is an appropriate level for anyone under 85. I think this is something that Blizzard dropped the ball on, considering that whether it's a pug or guild group, the mage can't support their group members who are leveling up. A few of us used to take the time away from other things to go to lobby areas. Not Gold Chow and Moonguard though, just no. Sometimes during a BG or dungeon queue to offer food and water to folks leveling up. It was a way to give a little back, and I am kind of sad that this is no longer possible. Whether our reasons are altruistic or selfish, it should be our choice whether we want to provide venting for our fellow players. The bottom line is, it looks like a bug rather than something intended, and I think the Blizzard should include some sort of hotfix for this, what do you reckon? Well, it simply comes down to the fact that it got broken due to the removal of downranking. Before the removal of downranking, you are able to create any rank of food for various different levels. Oh, you need level 35? No problem, it's rank 3 or 4 or whatever it was. Oh, you need rank 6 food? Here you go. Because they took that out, they inadvertently also stopped you from making food for anyone below your level when you hit the max level. And it's something they didn't really think through because that can't be intended. Why would it be intended? What is the reason for that? There is no practical reason for that to be intended. So... To me, it does seem like something they need to fix. The way I'd personally fix it is just make food detect what level the person eating it is. It's evidently possible because you can do it with heirloom items, so why can't you do it with food? I can think of no practical reason to keep it in its current form. This one comes in from Barney, and we're going to be skimming certain parts of it because it's quite long. It says, I was just wondering what your views are on the utterly pathetic stereotypes that are often handed to WoW players. My friends know that I play WoW and often think it's funny or cool to say it's gay or sad, etc. What really bugs me is the fact that I hear them talking about Call of Duty, GTA, etc. and other games, but regularly hate on WoW, saying that I'm sad for playing it, I need to get a life. Don't get me wrong, I do like to play things like COD from time to time, and I'm not slandering it. I've tried to explain that both COD and WoW are completely different games, and it's ridiculous to poke fun at WoW just because it's not an overly violent shooter or crime-filled rampage. But it is, when you think about it. And <laughs> maybe not shooting, but you are basically a genocidal maniac in WoW. I mean, how much violence and killing there is in WoW is ridiculous. It's way beyond Cord or anything like that. Anyway, being the arrogant and ignorant morons that they are, they won't have any of this. So what is your opinion? And it goes on to ask... Do you get ripped on for playing WoW or other cool games like it? Is England any better? Well, no, England is not any better, but I'm an adult, so it doesn't matter. I've got to assume that, you know, you're a teenager or whatever, and some of my audience is, so it's understandable. Bear in mind that teenagers have always been like this, and they probably always will be, and there's nothing you can really do to change that. It's not just teenagers that are incapable of thinking properly. I mean, YouTube has demonstrated that there's plenty of adults that do that as well, but generally speaking, they won't do it in real life because they would maybe get punched in the gut. Whatever the case, as an adult, I do not care what other people think of my hobbies. It is irrelevant. It does not affect me in any way, shape, or form. The main issue boils down to the fact that a lot of people do not understand the concept of subjectivity. They, do, they cannot grasp this. They cannot get their head around the fact that what they think actually is not what other people think and it's something that they then try and apply to other people and if they don't believe the same that they believe then they will then condemn that person as being wrong for whatever reason and they don't understand the concept of a personal preference or opinion and the fact that yes people do like different things it is not easily explained to the layman in scientific terms, and of course, there are mysteries of the brain we still have yet to unravel. The fact of the matter is that people like different stuff, and it would be really, really boring if they didn't. Can you imagine? Oh, we're just going to eat the same type of food. We're just going to watch the same kind of movies. We're going to have the same kind of books. Variety and competition goes completely out the window, and we have a horrible, boring, dull world to live in. Oh, God. You know, I That would be my 
nightmare scenario, in my honest opinion. And yes, some people like things that you don't like. Holy crap, that is insanity, I know. But that is the case, and people do need to accept that. The problem is they don't know how. They've been brought up with this idea that objectivity is the same as subjectivity, and what they don't like has to be bad. It must be, because they can't understand any other perspective on the matter. It's unfortunate, but at the end of the day, if you have friends like this, then may I suggest you find new friends, because they don't sound like friends to me. It's a rather parental piece of advice, but just ignore them and they will go away actually does work on kids, although not on internet trolls, just bear that in mind. Okay folks, that's me done for the day, please remember to vote this video up if you do like it, feel free to vote it down if you do not, that is what it's there for, you will not offend me, if you are trying to offend me with your downvotes it will not work, but please do downvote it if you do not like it, again it's, it's what it's there for, why, why would I tell, oh please just thumb up and don't downvote, no don't do that, now of course you should downvote it if you don't like it, and of course the mailbox at cynicalbrit.com is an ideal place to leave your constructive criticism if you think there's something about the show that I can improve. Thanks a lot guys, and I'll see you next time.